I just want to make a correction from uh, the previous video uh, about the preamp. So in the previous video, I uh, made the circuit correctly, but I mistakenly put this resistor, the 470 ohm resistor, from here. But on the actual circuit, I made it correct. So if you put it here to ground, it doesn't actually give you any amplification, so you have to put it here. Uh, I can't believe I did that, but... Anyway, uh, people make mistakes, so that's one of them. So um, basically I have the, the preamp is uh, going to positive 12 volt and negative 12 volt. And then the, the input signal comes in here and it goes into the non-inverting input. The, uh, there's a negative feedback uh, loop here from the output uh, to, the neg to the inverting input with the 100K resistor and a voltage divider with 470 to ground. And this gives you um, a gain of about 213 times. You put the output uh, through a 100 microfarad capacitor and that gets output to the amp. So that being said, since I'm on uh, <coughs> the kick of talking about preamps, um, when you have this much gain out of an op amp, it does it is kind of noisy. And so I had uh, suggestions from one of my viewers uh, including including uh, cool dude Clem, who um, uh, made a tape recorder uh, playback circuit before, so you guys should watch his videos uh, about this. But um, a better preamp is something like this. So to get to filter out some of this noise, um, I put uh, it's the same circuit as before, but I put a 10 nanofarad capacitor to ground from the input signal, which takes away some of that high frequency noise from the um, the tape head circuit. Um, and also, in order to give you a better bass boost, uh, I put a within the feedback loop. I put a 330 picofarad capacitor, which um, when this is in the feedback loop. This provides, this is very high resistance to um, uh, low frequencies. So if there's a high resistance to low frequencies, um, there, the total resistance of this is higher. And so as a result, this is still a 470 ohm uh, resistor here. And so that gain becomes higher at lower frequencies um, and lower at higher frequencies. So uh, it provides a nice little bass boost kind of situation here. And then adding an extra little one to filter out more noise, um, which is a 5.6 nanofarad capacitor before this uh, 100 microfarad capacitor. And then the output goes to the amp. So that's the um, corrected preamp. And this is the better preamp um, circuit. So anyways, thanks. Basically, I made this tape head previously um which uh works but it's uh the gap in it is not good enough to play from the tape and so i have to use the other playhead but it does do one thing it erases the tape and so when you can use it as an erase head if you put a um high amplitude like about uh at least eight to 10 to 12 volts um, sine wave through it um, at an inaudible frequency, it successfully records the inaudible frequency onto the tape head. And so if I was gonna uh, test it out, um, I basically have to uh, take the, um, the signal and I generated it with this uh, CD, uh, um, 4106 oscillator and made a sine wave. So let's test it out. So the first step in this, uh, designing this, uh, high amplitude sine wave is to use the CD 4106, um, uh, chip here. It's basically powered off of, uh, 12 volts. And what I have is a 470 ohm resistor and a um, 10 nanofarad capacitor. Uh, 
and in addition that 470 ohm resistor uh, I have this uh, potentiometer here and the potentiometer is a 10k potentiometer so you can adjust it uh, to the frequency you want and when I do that the output of this is uh, a 10 volt uh, peak to peak uh, circuit that I'm going to adjust down to um, some kind of frequency like uh, 48 kilohertz here. So 48 kilohertz is an inaudible frequency. Human hearing can only go uh, to 200 uh, uh, kilohertz and so or to 20 kilohertz I'm sorry and so it's inaudible and it's high enough voltage and so the right now it's a square wave and so I have it going um, in here through this wire the output of that uh, oscillation now I'm gonna put it through a couple of low-pass filters here the first one is here um, and when you put it through a low-pass filter it starts to look like that. You put it through a second low pass filter. Um, and so when you probe it at various points, here's what it looks like after the first low pass filter. After the second low pass filter, it, and going through this um, capacitor to center it, um, this is the signal. So unfortunately, that signal is not high enough voltage um so what i'm going to have to do is take this other capacitor out and right now i have a small uh i think this is a 4.7k resistor and and now the signal going out uh kind of looks like this it's sinusy but i wanted to maintain the the high voltage so i'm gonna have to go with that for now so now um, what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take this little record head the, the tape head that I made this makeshift one and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach one side of it to the output signal and the other side of it to ground and Notice the signals, because of the low resistance of this um, circuit, uh, all, the, all of the voltage goes away on the oscilloscope. But what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna set this tape head, which with, without a, this tape deck without a tape player down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it record that signal, because that signal is coming through here. And, uh, I'm just gonna hold it over the tape. And see if it erases. So now I did that. And let's see if it erases. So I'm gonna take this out. There is an old tape head, so it doesn't work that well. And I'm gonna try to play it through this second tape deck. Now I'm going to hook it up to the tape head preamplifier circuit. And then I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to put it in here and put it in as the input. Of, and you could already hear it. Um, you can hear the noise from it. So now let me rewind this tape to the point where I started recording. Okay, it's rewound. And let's hear what it sounds like. There we go, the tape's going through. Oh, you can hear a little bit of the Let's hear it when an actual, when I stopped re, um, erasing it. Oh, there we go. All right, well, 
there you go. Now I didn't rec I didn't uh, erase it past this point. Maybe a couple of little spots here. So it worked with erasing, but um, I don't have a bias signal uh, high enough to actually record with it. But that was a successful portion of the experiment. So we'll see. In the meantime, for playing, I don't think I could use this head. I don't think it's that usable. But this is enough to um, erase that portion of the tape. So let's see what else we could do. So this is the essence of a tape recorder. It's uh, basically, um, this is a double cassette deck. Um, I have a tape in one of them. But, uh, and I have the head removed from the top one. I have this uh, tape, it's the only audio tape I own still um, currently. And uh, basically what happened, how this works is you have the mechanism um, right here um, that uh, is, a five, is a five volt motor, DC motor and basically has, it spins both of them using a band. And uh, the mechanisms on the inside are uh, basically when you press these buttons, um, you make things move. So for instance, this is the rewind. This is the fast forward and it basically sets up little wheels. It's all mechanical um, and uh, it's kind of neat. So um, if you want to press play, it engages the motor at a slower speed. Oh, sorry, that's the stop button. Here's the play button. And it drops down the play head. And this is an erase head. This is a play head and record head. And, um, and if you want to press record, you it basically engages um, the tape, uh, the erase head. Um, so the way the way it works is basically just a bunch of uh, gears on the inside. Um, this little guy right here is spring loaded, and it engages with this mechanism here, which is spinning constantly. And what it does is it keeps tape under tension. Um, so, so far, I have this tape head, uh, that I took out, um, I have it wired with the left and right signals and the ground and the ground, uh, there's a separate ground for the casings. And so I have it going through this big long cord and the cord is going into this, uh, preamp circuit. And uh, if I want to play something, I basically engage the play mechanism on the tape. And let me, it's a little noisy because I have a very high uh, gain here. But um, basically, you can hear it when I put the head on the tape. scratching the tape now with the, the head so it works out fairly well um, in terms of the sound signal. Let me make sure. and you have to you just you have to adjust the, the tape mechanism. The That's some semblance of music there. Let me turn that so off. So I'm going to leave you with the schematic of the better preamp. Once again, thank you for watching.